Hello and welcome to my video. My name is Charlotte Mallet and I'm going to show you how to make this fun card with a um, double registration, I guess is what you'd call it. I don't know, this floating flower on top of this watercolor wash on the back and we're just going to line these two um, images up to align perfectly and create this visual dimension. Kind of cool. So let's get started. We're going to use crushed curry ink, watercolor paper, and the Tool Wild Rose stamp set. The only images in this set that we're going to use are the flower outline image and the true friendship of one, is one of God's greatest gift greetings. Those are the only two stamps that we're going to need from this set. The set does have dies that coordinate, however we're going to hand cut the image um, that we need, so you won't need the dies. All you'll need is that stamp set or any other stamp set that you have that has a large flower and a greeting so you can get this same effect. All right, let's get started. Okay, so I'm using crushed curry. First, I'm gonna create a watercolor wash on a piece of watercolor paper. This paper's four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm gonna add a couple drops. Oh, that's Mango Melody. That's not the color we want. We want crushed curry. A couple drops of crushed curry into the lid. And I'm gonna create just kind of an organic shape back here for watercolor wash. That aqua painter is filled with white. Let's find one that's clear water. So we're gonna create like just this kind of organic shape. We'll lay in some of this crushed curry color here. Not wet enough, let's give it some more water. And this is meant to be kind of messy. That looks good where it's darker here and a little lighter over there. That's step one. We're going to set that aside to dry because then we're going to stamp the greeting on it. Let's see if we can get that to dry. Step two, we're going to stamp this floral. Now I'm going to stamp that large outline of the flower from this set, just this one. We're not going to use these others on another sheet of watercolor paper. So let's do that. Let's get that inked up. That looks good. We're just going to stamp it. Maybe we'll stamp two for good measure. That way we have another one to play around with. We'll close that up. so it dry, it doesn't dry out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just pull that ink on each petal towards the middle and give us a little bit of a watercolor effect. Just enough. I created a video doing this a few months ago using a paper pumpkin kit and you can check that out on my Instagram feed see this step in a little more detail but I'm just gonna do kind of a messy pull that in pull that ink in that looks pretty good softens it up softens the edges that looks nice let's try this other one see if we like it better let's squirt some more ink or water We'll skip every petal on this one, see if we can get a little more definition. Come back over here. This is just a water brush, an aqua painter. This is just um, the paper I'm using is watercolor paper. You can get this from Stampin' Up or you can get it from your local craft store. The stamp set is available from Stampin' Up. It's called To A Wild Rose. I think I like that better with a little bit of the white poking through with that center there. That's pretty. Okay, that looks great. Now we're gonna cut this out. Because once we cut it out, then we will uh, it will probably dry enough, be dry enough that we can then stamp the greeting 
onto it so that it will float above the other greeting and I'll explain what I'm doing here in just a second. Uh, I, and it appears dry enough. Now this piece is also dry enough. Now what we're going to do is if you have a stamp apparatus or a stamp alignment tool, you're going to pull that out and you're going to take this greeting, true friendship is one of God's greatest gifts, and you're going to line it up. Let's figure out where we want it on this watercolor here. So, let's see here. Oh, I messed up and I put my magnets together. You don't want to do that. All right. So let's just first see if that looks good. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, I want a really dark impression here and watercolor paper is sometimes bumpy. And so um, the reason I'm using the Stamparatus is so that I can stamp this a couple of times in the same place to get truly a dark impression. Oh yeah, that's looking gorgeous, right? Look at that one more time. Okay, you can use any black ink. For this particular um, card I'm using, Versafine, I just like how crisp and dark that ink is. Okay, that looks great. Now, this is going to go over the top here. Um, our challenge is, is that we don't see the rest of that greeting. So we could have done two things. First of all, we could have stamped it here. Maybe we'll do it both ways, actually, because I cut the wrong one out. We're going to stamp it on the flower, just a portion so that the flower will overlap our watercolor, but still be aligned in such a way that it will pop and kind of float and have this three-dimension appearance. We'll get that just as deep as we did on our first one, three times, I think. Perfect. See that? So this is gonna just pop right on top of here and we're gonna line this up right like that. See that? And give it a little bit of dimension but we'll register the greeting like so. So you kind of get this optical illusion. Fun, right? So let's do that, but let's also stamp on this one so that we have it for a second card, just cause I want to. Where do I want this one? Yeah, that looks good. love the Stamparatus for this very reason of really getting deep ink coverage. Nice. Let's see, do I like that better? I think I am going to like that better, so let's trim that out for making our card. You get to see me do that again. One more time, let's see how fast I can go. just like how some of the areas on this flower, the white areas pop a little bit more. I'm going to cut closer to the edge of that flower so that I don't have a white halo and maybe that's the reason for hand cutting this because I really want it to blend into this watercolor right here. And so the closer I can trim to the edge of the flower, the more that it will blend in and when you use the dye, you do have a little bit of a white halo around the image. And I like to hand cut or fussy cut, and so it's no problem for me to do that. Now this is really quite a simple card. It'll, you'll be surprised at how quickly this will come together, but it makes such a nice impact because it's got a strong color it's got a good amount of uh, white space to balance it out. And we're gonna pair it with this fun graphic stripe from the Bird Ballad Designer Series paper. And that stripe really 
makes this card feel a little bit more modern. Oh yeah, I like that. And you see how the white areas kind of help that define that a little bit more. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, let me see, what would be the best course of action? I think we're going to mount these. So the card shows a little bit of a reveal on the top and a little bit of a reveal on the bottom. Like I said, this is right now cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And because of that re reveal on the top and the bottom, we're gonna want about a quarter inch reveal. So we're gonna need to trim off probably a half inch. So let me just cut a half inch or so off of that. And let's see how that will look on our card base. Yeah, that's about the right amount. You're just gonna cut a strip of this Bird Ballad designer series paper. And you're going to first just run adhesive. This is, you could measure it before and cut, but I just like to cut at the end. And you're just gonna kind of eyeball, cause we'll trim about a quarter inch. And we're gonna let that line up there. That looks really nice. We'll trim that off. And then we'll do the same along the top here. And we'll line this one up. I am kind of funny and I like to try and line up my stripes, <laughs> but I don't see where the pattern is on this one. I might not be able to do it. Nope, it's off. Oh well, no one will care but me. <laughs> so let's just line that up like so there. And then that will mount onto our card. And then we'll just trim off whatever is extra. So let's do that here really quick. In fact, we can even trim it once we mount it onto the card. Maybe that's a better way to make sure that we've got the whole thing lined up there. Okay, so I've got a guillotine cutter off to the side. Yes, let's do that. We're gonna mount this first flush onto that card. We'll just run our tape runner all over the back of this here. Give it good and sticky. Mm. Look at that, my ink smeared onto there. Good thing we're gonna be covering that up. It wasn't quite dry yet, but I don't think it's smeared on the card, so I think we're okay. Let's fold that so that we can I've lost my gummy adhesive remover. I got a little extra there, so I'll use my finger right now to get rid of that, but I don't know what I've done with my gummy eraser. We'll have to find it. So you get to see all the flaws in this card making. <laughs> okay, so now that it's mounted on there, the reason I did that first is that I could make sure that everything was truly stuck down before I pop this flower. And then I'm gonna add some dimensionals to the back of the flower here. And we're probably going to hit pretty much all the petals just so that it lays flush because sometimes the watercolor paper, once it's dry, curls a little bit and we want it to be as flush as possible on this card. Okay, we got all those peeled off the back. Now comes the alignment. And you just eyeball it and make sure that everything is lined up. That looks good. Tack down just on this side and then work your way across. That way it doesn't shift. And there we go. Ooh, look how nice that is. Okay, now we can embellish and we can add as little or as much on the embellishment front as we want. This card is simple, like I said, so all I'm going to add are a few sequins and I'm using the basic sequins here and I think I'm going to use these green ones that will pull in some of the green from the striped paper and I'm just going to let's see where they'll look good let's tack one there and let's pull and tack another there I don't know is that 
that enough? I think it is. And this would be pretty with the leaf coming off of it too. So we could do that. But for this um, purpose of, of this video, I just wanted to show you this fun technique of raising um, one image and then registering it with the underneath image so that you get this dual effect. Thanks so much for watching this video. My name is Charlotte Mallet. Have a great day.